Hi, I'm Mark Collier with the OpenStack Foundation, and I'm going to show you the OpenStack Grizzly dashboard today. Just go over a few of the highlights um, in the new release. So I've gone ahead and logged in as an administrator. So because I'm logged in as an administrator, I have these two tabs here on the left, the project tab and the admin tab. So if you're just a end user of an OpenStack cloud, you won't see this tab, you'll only see the project tab. So I'll go ahead and click on the project tab and we'll see what this looks like from an end user perspective. And then we'll go back and look at the administrator tab in a moment after we've spun up some resources. So OpenStack is of course a piece of software that's designed to allow you to control pools of resources of compute, storage, and networking. So we'll see that in action here in just a moment. So before we go ahead and, and create a new instance, we will create some resources that'll be attached to that instance, uh, namely volumes. So with the OpenStack block storage uh, project making a lot of improvements in the Grizzly release, um, this is even easier to use. So this will be my uh, new volume here. I'm just gonna make a small volume that we can easily and quickly attach to a new instance. Um, and this only takes a few seconds and you can see this new volume is already available. Um, the next thing we're going to do is create a network. So we'll start by creating a router. I've already created a few earlier. Um, I'm running through this demo. So we'll create another router and we will create a network. So when we create a network, it's pretty straightforward. Just have to complete a few details here about the subnet and the name of the network. And I'll go ahead and give it a 10.5 range because I know that's available on my local network. And we'll set the gateway IP here. And that's really all it takes to quickly uh, use the dashboard in Grizzly to create a new network. And now we have a network created. We have block storage volumes created. So we can take a look at our network topology before we create an instance and you'll see that the new network is here. This is a really cool graphical view that's been added to OpenStack dashboard. You can actually see each of the networks and as you create more networks and add resources, it all gets um, viewed here and you can keep an eye on it. So now it's time to create an instance. So let's create an instance and attach it to our new network and our new volume. So my new instance is going to be here. I'm gonna select an image and as you can see here, uh, there's a list of flavors. Now, when you're in the administrator view, you can actually um, configure these flavors for your users. So you may have, uh, you may want to create an instance type or a flavor of instance that actually has a lot of memory and a little bit of disk or vice versa, or a lot of vCPUs. But as we select different sizes, you'll see here that it actually gives me a sense of how much uh, within my quota for the project that I'm working in at the time is available. So in this case, we're going to take a, a tiny size instance. We will attach the private network in the new network we just created. You can also configure the access and security and any uh, post creation scripts that you want to run. But right now we're just going to simply attach the volume. So we're going to boot from a volume. Uh, we could also boot from a snapshot. Um, once you tell it you want to boot from a volume, you'll say which of your volumes, and of course I just created this volume a few seconds ago. So we'll connect to that and we will launch our new instance. Now if all goes according to plan, the new instance will be uh, attached to the new network, it will be attached to the old network, and it will be mapped to the new block device. And you can see here um, it's giving you real-time feedback as to what's actually happening as it builds the new virtual machine um, to our specifications and now we're already active and you can see the IP addresses here um, as we uh, specified and if we go back to our network topology voila there's our new machine it's connected to our private and our new network and of course as you grow in complexity with your deployment um, and you will have that all reflected here so last but not least before we sign off I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can also use the object storage um, system in your cloud from this dashboard. I already created a few containers earlier. I'll create one more. Uh, let's see here, another container. Just so you can see how easy it is to create. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload an object into my 
into my cloud, which is going to be my operations guide. Now, if you haven't seen the operations guide, there's a new operations um, guide book that was recently published for operators. A lot of amazing information in there. So we use that in our demo. And you can see the object's already uploaded. And here it is. And if I wanted to download it, I can do that as well. So, um, of course, many people use APIs when they're accessing their OpenStack cloud, but having a dashboard even for object storage is always a nice option. And if you do want to discover your API endpoints so you know where to look, if you look on uh, access and security under the compute section here, uh, there's a tab for API access, which will show you your, your endpoints for each of the services. So I think that's another um, ease of use improvement here that helps you quickly figure out uh, what API endpoints are relevant for your particular cloud if you want to access your cloud programmatically and not through the dashboard. So before I sign off, I'll just show you one more time the administrative view. And now you can see the instances that uh, we created. So this is the instance I just created. The volume that I created is now uh, visible here. So the administrator can see what all uh, volumes um, and instances have been created. They can specify different flavors, and which are essentially combinations of memory and disk and different resource combinations, depending on what their users need, manage their image library. Um, in terms of the projects, I mentioned that there are quotas. And you could see earlier that I only had three instances I was allowed to, to have. So if I want to increase this particular demo projects quota to five, um, if you went back into here, you would see that now we have one of five instances in use. So I've given this, this project a little more uh, breathing room to grow. And you can add additional users, look at the networks that were created, and the routers, as well as look at the list of services. So these are actually the services that make up the heart and soul of OpenStack that are actually operating the cloud. And uh, in this particular case, they're all on one host because I'm running a very small cloud, but in a uh, production setting would be different. And you have the default quotas. So when you create a new project, these are the quotas that are assigned by default. So with that, I'll just sign off and say thank you very much for checking out OpenStack Grizzly. You can go to openstack.org to learn more and hope you have a good time with OpenStack.